In this video we're going to style the scroll bars. Uh, it's been long overdue. So I run a Windows dark theme. Which really makes this obvious of how much this stands out. It's one of the things that we haven't styled in the application yet. So we're going to make a custom scroll bar style. Uh, now I've never done this before in WPF. If I have I can't even remember it. It would have been years ago. So this is going to be a good example of, of seeing how I figure things out and everything I figure out really is always self-taught uh, which is fairly obvious but the the way that I figure things out is not necessarily always obvious to other people so I like to say it's I solve things by first breaking them and then building them back up again and that's always a good way of not just in software but in in general uh, a good way to you know figure things out if, if you manage to break something then you know the thing you've broke is directly related to um, you know that piece that is now broken and then you can put things back together and see how they work so to start with the scroll bar we first want to make a new style so we'll just copy say this colors one and call it scroll and then we'll include it in the app.xaml And I'll just open that file and clear everything out. And now this is one of them things where it's not like you've got, uh, let's see, a grid for example, or you know any element where you can click in the UI and select like the page host, and then just right click, edit template, and edit to copy in order to get access to the template. So with the scroll bar being more of a, uh, you know, the thing just gets added for you when it's needed, there's no way to right click in here. So the other option you have is to basically go to uh, C Drive, Program Files, x86, uh, Visual Studio 14 if you're on uh, 2017, otherwise you'll have uh, things like 10 or you'd have 13 for 2016, there wasn't one was there, 15. So 13 might be 2015, but basically you'll have a version number. If you're running 2017, then it says 14. And then design tools, uh, system themes, WPF. And then this is where all of the the themes are. So I'm gonna pick the Aero 2, which I believe is the standard one, and open with code, which is Visual Studio Code. And this is all the styles for every WPF control. So we just control F to find and type scroll bar. I'm guessing that's what it's called. Uh, there's a lot of places that have got a scroll bar on the name. So we want something that's got uh, like this style where the key is scroll bar. So it's going to end with a curly bracket. So let's just put a curly bracket on the search. And that will hopefully... There we go. So line 4430 here is a scroll bar. And that's the style you'd normally get. Which is quite a big style. So let's collapse that, copy the whole style, and paste it into our scroll. Ah, uh, that didn't work. Ah, it only collapsed part of it. Okay, let's just expand down. There we go. Copy that. Paste the style in. And you can see that's now the scroll bar style. So let's just press F5 first, make sure everything still works. We haven't broken anything just by adding that style, which we apparently have. Um, so now it looks like we are using in here things like static background, static border for colors. So let's just delete those for now. We don't want to use those because we're going to customize this style anyway. Uh, scroll bar buttons got a style just delete that for now again we're going to completely customize this so we don't really care there's a path for the arrow so this repeat button I'm guessing by the looks of it then arrow tops fairly obvious it's going to be that arrow uh, like this scroll bar over here you've got a, a little arrow so that path is going to be to do with that so I'm just going to delete that path just because it's got a style that we can't find uh, same there that's not going to find 
the fill. I mean, we could actually just change the fill. Let's leave that in and change the fill to, I don't know, red. And then we should at least see um, red scroll bar arrows, if this is what they are. Uh, it's used in quite a lot of places. Let's just run and see if that runs first. No, so we still got repeat button transparent. And that's because a lot of these, uh, you know, these styles and things are part of uh, this style sheet. So we're just going to strip out all of these uh, styles. So let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. A thumb, get rid of the style. Get rid of that style. Basically, everywhere you see the squiggly underline, we'll just delete for now. This is a data trigger. Uh, set a fill. Okay, we'll just delete that whole thing. Same for that. Same for that. And that, and that. And if we were planning on uh, doing a small tweak to the style of the scroll bar, then we'd fix all these things. We'd actually find this glyph, which I'm guessing you'll just find in here by typing glyph. Uh, so you've got certain things like here. It's going to be inside this file, I'd say. Um, if not, then you, know, you can do some digging, do some Google search, and you can find out where the styles are stored. Um, or you can just do a file search inside of um, this folder, and you might find that it's, you know, somewhere around here. Uh, but either way, that should be an easy find. But because we're going to be stripping out this entire scroll bar, really, for the most part, and restyling, then uh, it doesn't really matter so much. So change that to red. Why my mouse keeps jumping to the bottom of the screen every time I'm uh, clicking in anything. So you can see this is a really big control as well. Uh, scroll bar is not a simple control. As much as you think it is, there's quite a lot that goes into it. And we'll clean all this up anyway. Our control is going to be a lot simpler than this. We don't need a lot of this stuff. So all I'm doing still is deleting just everywhere where there's an error. So now there's nothing in the as enabled as false. Let's run this and hopefully it'll build and not crash. There we go and you can see for the most part we've kind of got the scroll bar. It's really hard to see so we've got a little red arrow there that we change the colour red to. Uh, we've got, you can just about see the centre scroll bar there and you can see these little areas here which are the the blank parts of the scroll bar so let's start now we've got we know the styles working let's start taking a look at things and generally try and figure out what's going on so we've got a scroll bar style we're setting stylus is press and hold enabled is flicks enabled so i'm guessing they're to do with touch screen things and um the pen based on the stylus so we'll just leave those ignore them foreground so that's going to be let's just change that to blue and run and see if that appears anywhere so there's no obvious use of that foreground there so I'm going to simply delete that border thickness 10 let's do 1050 again having no effect so don't be surprised at half of this. Some of this stuff is either part of what we deleted or just legacy stuff that doesn't need to be there. Width and min width are set to vertical scroll bar width key, which is a system set value. Well, we want to customize ours to suit our application. So let's change this to something like, let's change it to like 50 first to make sure we can, it's actually working and see if this stretches the scroll bar. Which it does. So there's the first start. We've got a big fat scroll bar now. So we know this is controlling the width. 
So in that case, uh, I don't know whether we need min width. I'm guessing min width is if there's no content. So we'll keep min width in. Uh, and we could just do binding to uh, actual width. Or in fact, we could just do binding to width because we're setting it. And relative source is relative source self. And what doesn't it like about that? Okay, what's the syntax going on here? Relative source as relative source. Oh, yeah, we don't put the equals, it's just the space. Uh, so that should just bind to the width. So let's just change that to, say, 30. Uh, and there we go, so that's worked. So we've now got the width we can set, which we'll leave big for now. Then we go into the template, so we collapse that. We've got the template, then we've got triggers, and that's it. So you've got a trigger here for horizontal, which I'm guessing then is styling the control to work horizontally. So we'll come back to that uh, afterwards, but we know here's the height, so we want to do a similar thing. Whatever, well, I'm going to take a guess we want a, a width or a height of, I don't know, let's see. Say 8, maybe. Uh, let's try 10. We can always tweak this. Uh, and then we'll make this the same. Binding height relative source. Relative source self. And then we'll touch all this after. This is going to clearly style it when it goes horizontal. So we'll add a horizontal bar afterwards and figure that out. So now we're focusing on really just the template of the scroll bar. So you get to here, this is the main grid. And then you've got grid triggers. So uh, line down button. The condition is fulfilled. And then it's doing nothing because we deleted those elements that were styling things. So actually all of these are just simply triggers that we're going to style the control. So I'm guessing when you were pressing down on like the arrow up here, it was to change the color like that's changing it to light blue. So I think that's all these were. These were all styling and they're just basic um, bindings so that you can, uh, you know, you can figure that out ourselves for our own styling as we need. So I'm just going to delete all these triggers. We can always add them back as we want. Uh, then we've got the row definition. So there's three rows. We have a height of, I'm guessing these are the top and bottom arrow buttons, and then this will be expanding to fill the remainder. Uh, we've got a border, a repeat button. Okay, so let's just group these. And the real quick way of figuring out what's going on here is let's start by deleting the border and seeing what goes missing. Uh, so nothing obvious. We've made it thin as well. So that was in grid one. So that was the main part there. And um, background. Is that so let's change the background first we might be able to see it better background to red so I think we're safe to just delete that border as well line up button track line down so I'm guessing I can almost be assured that this repeat button both of these are going to be the up and down arrows Let's just delete those as well, because I'm going to just have a scroll bar. I don't want up and down arrows. So there we go. So you can see the up and down arrows have now gone, and we're left with the, the gap of where they should be. And that's because of this row definition. So let's just delete the row definition and see if that still works. See if it gets rid of those 
white spaces now. Yep, so now we're down to just a bar, which is what we want. And we have a name part track. So we have then inside here a repeat button for page up and page down. So if we don't know if you can just remove this out of the track, it might need all parts, but looks like a track as a control with an increase, a decrease, and a, a track itself. So there we go. So we've deleted the bottom the bottom part of the scroll bar there in that case then. So that looks like the increase button then is the the one on the bottom. And the decrease button is the one on the top. And I noticed I saw somewhere, I don't know whether we deleted it. That ah there is direction reverse. So I'm guessing this thing will flip the order around. So if we delete that again so that we're missing the bottom half there. Now let's just change this is direction reverse to false and see if that flips it around. Which I'd expect so based on the name. Yeah, so now the scroll bar. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. So the scroll bar sort of um, reversed in a kind of strange way that I'm not used to seeing. And uh, down on the mouse... So the mouse wheel hasn't been re inverted, just the visual. The you know the buttons up here. If I click the bar down there, it goes down. So I guess that's if you prefer reversing the scroll bar. We'll leave that as just true for now. And we want those two repeat buttons. So let's start by well, really the repeat buttons. We just want to make invisible on ours. So let's just do opacity of zero. Opacity of zero. And then this thumb is going to be uh, the main, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the main bar, the part we want to really style. Which it now is, and I guess because there's no bar there, it's sort of just messed up the, the whole thing. So it looks like we just want to, we've hidden the top and bottom uh, parts here, but they should still work. So we still click them. Because they're just opacity zero, they're not removed. And now we've just got this bar, which is what I'm after. I just want a nice simple bar. I want to bring it out from the edge, down from the edge a little bit with some padding all around, really. Um, and then just style it a, a nice simple rounded rectangle. So that's the thumb, then, obviously, of the scroll bar. So let's start by. We want to put some padding in first. And we have. I kind of don't like setting this width here. I prefer to just do padding and the inside one is what sets the width. So I'm going to be tempted to just delete the width altogether. And then I don't know, we haven't set a width here now, so I think it's just going to go to some kind of default size there. But let's now see if I specify if the track has a width. Yep. Let's do a track width of 8. And then we should be able to do padding, and if not, we'll put a border around that and do padding. So it's done eight, and then it's just, it's actually, no, so something's overriding the width value. So that's probably the scroll view that contains the scroll bar. So let's put back in the width. And I guess we need this in order to override the default behavior. So what we're going to have to do is, instead of having a padding, which we normally do, we will set the track width. So let's set the width to uh, 8 seemed okay there. And I noticed it was not aligned, so do horizontal alignment center. And let's see what that looks like. So that's left as a you know, pixel either side. I think the thickness of this is right, but we want this to be slightly wider now. Let's make that 14. So that's better, that's okay there. Now we want to have a little space off the top and bottom. So for that, I think we can just use, um, let's see if there is padding. 
No, so let's just wrap this track, which is in grid row one. So cut that out, wrap this whole thing. And in fact, we've only got one row now, so the row definitions can just go. Make a border, place that in there. You can see our scroll bar is now quite a simple, in fact, a really simple um, template. Oh, I've done that. I forgot to add the border to the the padding to the border. Uh, so padding we want uh, left and right. We don't want any of top and bottom. We want say five. Let's see what that's like. There we go. It's not quite the same as there. So let's reduce it to four. I don't know why I put a comma. I just works both ways, but that looks neater. Right, there we go. So that's, that's a nice scroll bar. You'll notice also the background. I want to be transparent so we can see this. And I think also... Um, well, let's start with trying to make it transparent. Or let's start with making it red first so we can figure out where the background is. Uh, set a... Properties background... Value is red. So that isn't the background, something else is overriding it further down. So let's change the grid, see if we've got it in the grid. Background blue. So the grid's got a background of blue now, so let's make the grid transparent. And then let's see if now the red shows through on the scroll bar. No, so the scroll bar background is just being completely ignored, so that can go. And then it looks like the scroll bar is pushing our content out. So let's simply put a negative margin on the scroll bar so this flows into it. So we've got a width of 14. Set a property uh, margin. Then this is on the right hand side, so we're presuming the scroll bar is always on the right hand side. Uh, which, as far as I know it is, there might be some languages where it flips the opposite side and you might want to invert this. Uh, or we might want to do some more advanced logic, but for now, I'm pretty sure the scroll bar is just always on the right hand side. So we should just do minus 14 for the left, 0, 0, 0. And then I'm wondering whether we can just do a minus 14 on the right as well, without any downside. So that that's worked. Yeah, so now we've got a fade. You just about see it, because that's not a very strong colour, but you can see it's, it's behind. It's appearing behind the scroll bar. And now we just want to pad out our uh, actual control a little bit more off the edge, so the scroll bar uh, doesn't cut into the text. And then it looks you know, nice, it just overlays. Uh, let's just finish the scroll bar first, though. Let's style. Well, let's see if we can add a minus to the right side as well. Or that might do something slightly negative. Yes, that's going over. So it needs to be. Uh, if you ever find a system where uh, this is um, on the left hand side of the scroll bar, then you'd have to tweak the style based on potentially region or just do something more. But. That's okay for now. Uh, we'll do the same in this horizontal thing at least. So we know we want 14. And we know we'll then want a property margin. Where the left 0, top 0, right 0. And the bottom is minus 14. Uh, hang on, no that's not right is it? Top is minus 14. So I'll have the same effect down there. Border thickness we don't have. Uh, height, min width, min height. Okay, so jumping ahead slightly because we've now got a good hold of what's going on here. It's fairly simple. Let's have a quick look at the horizontal. Um, so now this is actually redefining the whole template for horizontal, which is kind of nasty. Um, We know we deleted all those. Let's get rid of all the triggers again. 
Then we got rid of the rows, or in this case the columns, there's only going to be one. Got rid of the border, got rid of the repeat button. We kept just the track. So we get rid of the other repeat button. And what's different about all this then? They just set the height. There's got to be somewhere where this flips around the, the track. It doesn't need the column. Left and right command. Okay, so it's just exactly the same. It's just that it changes the, the width to auto and the height to a fixed amount. And then maybe this adapts automatically. Maybe it just simply knows when it's horizontal. So we'll try that out afterwards. But all I've done is stripped out that uh, appearance. So the final thing that we want to style this thumb. And let's go back to the original style. And what did it do with the thumb? Um, so it had a style called scroll bar. Ah, that's why the horizontal one worked because it had a thumb style so I'm guessing this thumb style yeah so it styled the thumb differently that was the key in the two commands so uh, hmm yeah that's not a great way they've done it there they've just done two different styles but never mind uh, let's have a look at the scroll bar vertical then where's that gone Scroll bar thumb vertical. So let's see if we can find that. So there's the style. So let's just copy the vertical one for now. Paste it in above. And we have overrides default style true, tab stop false, template. Then there's a rectangle with a fill, a height, and a width. And a trigger on hover, change the color. So let's start with that. What's different on the horizontal then? Same, same, same. Thumb, true. Fill is the thumb. Height's the height, width's the width. So my mouse decided to stop working for a moment then I just had to connect and reconnect the mouse. Um, so the height is the same, the width is the same. So these styles, unless I'm missing something here, are exactly the same. There's like no difference whatsoever. So we should be okay to simply call it scroll bar thumb. Or yeah, because the thumb might be used somewhere else. And then we will style the thumb as uh, style, static resource, scroll bar thumb. Do that for both for now. I've got a feeling we won't need, I don't think we need this whole duplicate style for when the orientation's horizontal. We can potentially just, um, you know, alter some settings as opposed to completely redefining the template. Because right now that template is exactly the same. There is actually no difference other than the command. So, but it's, it's only a small style now so it doesn't really matter but I'm quite surprised that that's how Microsoft have written this template it seems a bit uh, overkill doing two duplicate templates so we've got the style set so first thing as always let's change the fill to red let's see if we can find out uh, if this is working this has got what's this uh, on mouse over the rectangle fill okay so on hover go to blue so we should have a Basically then a rectangle that's red to start with and on hover goes to blue. And on dragging, we could could have gone to green on dragging I guess. So there's red. Oh, we've messed up the margin somehow here. Uh, oh, that's because... I don't know why I did that. Yeah. So there's a red scroll bar, goes blue on hover, and it's draggable. 
let's change that drag to green as well. Let's see if we get a different style while we're dragging. And then we might as well make use of that. There we go. So we've got a three color scroll bar. Um, so we just want to round the edges on this. And then uh, turn it to our color. I think we'll have faded on normal. On hover goes solid blue. And I don't think we need any other. We don't need the drag color to be honest. So we'll just get rid of the dragging. As cool as that is. We don't need that. Uh, we have a fill right now of red, and we want instead probably uh, we want a semi-transparent one, so we can have a fill there. We could do a colour of the same, but we'll just do an opacity of say 0.3. And then what we're going to have to do is on hover, we're going to have to change the uh, property opacity to one so it goes back to solid and in fact we don't need the color the color is going to stay the same we're just going to go solid blue from faded blue and then let's just add the corner radius which we don't have in a rectangle we don't need a rectangle we need a border with a background color of that and a corner radius of uh, how wide were we we were 14 total, 8 wide, so we want a corner radius of 4. And that should be rounded at the corners. It should be faded blue, and then when you hover it goes solid blue. There we go. And I think we could probably go a little bit lighter as well. And maybe a little bit thinner. Let's go to, say, 3. And uh, let's make it 6 wide uh, on the track oh there's the thing we also had a width that we added so in this case we'd probably want a height adding because this is the horizontal we've got to check let's try the 6 on that and I think to be honest the opacity probably 0.1 uh, we could change this trigger to do a storyboard as well to be smoother fading up instead of solid that's faded, that's I go a little bit brighter and then on hover we'll change it to a you know a smooth fade. Just do point two. There we go, so that's okay. So now let's just change this template to uh storyboard. Um I can never remember the storyboard. take a look at what we do so an event trigger mouse enter do a storyboard so we'll change this from a trigger mouse over to an event trigger so that we can do a, a storyboard mouse enters fine begin storyboard want a double animation that goes to solid blue of one in 0.3 seconds, the target is the rectangle, as it's called, and the value is opacity. So I think that should now have a smooth animation. And on out, we need to reverse the operation, but there's a nice smooth fade. And then uh, copy all that. Mouse leave, I think, is the other style. And it wants to go. Now, is this where we can just do from one and it should reverse to what it was, maybe? I keep forgetting if that works. I'm pretty sure this works. Yeah, there we go. So now we have a nice little... Uh, well, it's a bit flashy again. Oh, yeah. So it's flashy because we're going from one no matter where we are. So we'll set it to go to... Uh, 0 0.2 just means we're going to have to make sure these two values match up which is not really that hard and then we won't get a, a flashy hover it'll just fade to and from wherever it is as you're hovering so you can whiz over and it doesn't flicker and then you hover and it fades in and then you can now move the scroll bar and that's a much nicer looking scroll bar now I feel we could potentially 
uh, add add it further out so that you can hover here and it'll fade in more. We could have it so you hover over the actual thing, but I think that's fine. That's that's good enough for me for now. And that's a nice looking scroll bar. So let's just budge in this uh, chat list to have a bit more padding. And uh, that will be in controls, chat, chat list, item control. And then it's going to be padding here, top, left, right. So we've got padding of 8. So yeah, padding of, let's try 18. I think that might be too much, but see what that's like. Uh, that's okay, it's a little bit too much because when there's no scroll bar, uh, like at the bottom of your loop there, it's a. Uh, well, I don't know, it's actually okay, it's not too bad. So, uh, let's go to 15, I think that'll do there. And then we want to check that the horizontal scroll bar works, so that's better. So, there's a nice looking scroll bar now. Uh, let's see if the scroll bar works in here as well. There we go. So now we've got a little scroll bar in there as well. That's the same style. So that seems to work there. Let's make sure the text doesn't uh, go over the scroll bar. Which it does. So you've got to bear in mind now, if we're going to style the scroll bar the way I've done, so it sort of overlays the, the control it's on instead of it just sticking out because that makes this look nicer where the, you know, the effect goes straight through then you're going to have to make sure everything that uses that scroll bar has the correct padding unless you you know you don't mind the scroll bar going over the the value like that it's up to you so we could potentially just remove the uh, extra padding because otherwise you're going to have to think about this everywhere you're doing it and let's make the default scroll bar you could have two styles of scroll bar you see uh, or you could have a an attach property or something to uh, do that but let's just get rid of that um, the margin here that sets it in let's get rid of that margin there and then the only thing there with that margin gone is um, this effect here that looks like then you know it's chopped off so we might want to um, alter just this control or you might like that you know it might not be uh, an issue. I personally like it when the margin's over, so what I'm going to do is leave the margin in and then I'm going to adjust the actual chat message box there as well. So that is in. Um, where did we put that? Pages chat page I think directly this message box so the padding is left nothing top and bottom with 10 right we're gonna do 10 and bottom will keep 10 so I'm just gonna push out the right of that text box as well so we get that nice effect I need to move that back again having to remember all the uh, bits I did where was it chat list item control I made that padding uh, 15. And now we've got that back to looking nicer. I definitely think it looks nicer just being over the top. And this shouldn't now. You can see there now we just added the padding and it stops before the scroll bar. So, uh, I'm happy with that. I think that's okay. So now we just need to make sure the horizontal scroll bar looks okay. So we get the visual effect directly in here anyway. So all we should have to do is... Um, let's just use this. Zoom in. And let's just make... Uh, where are we? Border, background red, width 100, height 100, and then we'll put that at the bottom. So 
So there's a border just a block. Do a scroll viewer. Put that inside. Make the width 50. The height 50. And there you can see the scroll bar there. We don't have a scroll bar. And I think it's because the horizontal scroll bar by default. Oh, hang on. It's uh, just horizontal scroll bar visibility auto. Ah, so there we go. That's a good way of seeing that we've got something slightly wrong there. So it looks like we've still got the track on. And in fact, if we run this, that should actually appear so we can play with it. And let's see if we've got both tracks, which I'm guessing we have. So that's all fine. But the horizontal one, we must have left the tracks in. Let's take a look. Uh, oh, yeah, we. The tracks weren't deleted, we just made them invisible with opacity zero. So, opacity zero. Opacity zero. So it does look like the track simply adapts to, it already knows when it's horizontal or not. So there's that. So I don't think, other than, we certainly don't need a template if, if we could bind it to the width of the control, say. Um, and then a margin yeah I'm just thinking instead of having two templates we simply set you know the properties up but to be honest for how small that is it's okay duplicating the, the template for now uh, but all you really need to do is change the height to 6 and the width to 0 as opposed to the width and height so we could do that with a bit more work. Uh, that can be a task for you to see if you can get rid of this template for the horizontal one and change it to just simple property bindings uh, so that when it's horizontal it works fine without having two templates. Uh, and if you manage to do that solution, uh, drop me a comment in the video uh, and I can certainly feature it and uh, maybe update it in the future to use that. So that's the scroll bar done, I think. So in the next video, we will, uh, what was the thing we were going to do? We we're going to do this drop down. So if I just run this, we're going to do like a drop down menu here when you click this button and an attach menu here when you click and it pops up. So we'll do those two menus next. Uh, but now at least that scroll bar is out of the way. That was the last bit of the UI that was uh, not you know, suiting the, the application. It just didn't look right. Uh, so we'll do pop-up menus next for sure. And then after the pop-up menu, again, if you let me know in advance in the comments what you'd like to see next, uh, then we'll get onto that. We could potentially put pictures inside of the chat messages so you could send pictures. We could do this emoji pop-up to see all the, the faces. Um, we could do the search bar so it slides out and then do some searching. We could do text highlighting. We could do... Uh, web page and email underscore and hyperlinking in here um, we could do the settings page so again just let me know what you want to see uh, and we'll start uh, doing that in the next video